It is October 1941. Winston Churchill is making one of his most famous speeches at his old school, Harrow. He encouraged the students and the nation by reminding them of how bad the war had been going at his previous visit to them 10 months earlier and contrasting that with the present strides being made. And from this, Churchill reached a three-word conclusion that has been inspiring generations ever since. I'll read part of his speech. You cannot tell from appearances how things will go. Sometimes imagination makes things out far worse than they are. But for everyone, surely, what we have gone through in this period, this is the lesson. Never give in. Never give in. Never, 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 never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. We stood all alone a year ago, and to many countries it seemed our account was closed. We were finished. Our country, gone and finished and liquidated. Very different is the mood today. Others thought Britain had drawn a sponge across her slate, but instead our country stood in the gap. There was no flinching and no thought of giving in. And by what seemed almost a miracle to those outside these islands, we now find ourselves in a position where I say we can be sure that we have only to persevere to conquer. You're watching an In Favor video series called Treasuring Your Words from Heaven. This is what to do and what not to do with your prophetic words. And we're walking you through 14 responses that you can take to your personal prophecies. So let's review. You're excited to have received a, a prophetic word and we're excited for you. And you were wise enough to record and transcribe it and you're reviewing it regularly. And you've prayerfully interpreted the word and you have tested the prophecy and you're sure that it has come from the Lord. You embrace it with all your heart. You haven't rushed into rash action that you'd regret later. You have faith that God will fulfill this prophecy in his own way and in his own time. And you're declaring that word aloud with conviction and assurance. You have also begun to align your life with the prophecy, taking steps to partner with God, seeing it come to pass. And you are fighting for that prophecy and with that prophecy, using the promise to fight the battle well. This video is a continuation and a culmination of all the previous ones. This step is a challenge to keep on reviewing your prophecy. Continue believing it. Don't stop declaring it. Persist in aligning your life with it and carry on fighting for it. Don't give up on that promise. This is a critical issue because one of the most discouraging aspects of prophecy is waiting for them to happen. At times, the wait can be a long one, and patient endurance will be required. Remember that when God promised Abraham, childless, old, dried-up Abraham, that he would have a child, Abraham did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised, Romans 4, 20 and 21. Abraham waited decades, many, many, many years, but he stayed with it. He refused to give up on that prophecy. Here's a quote from Faith Wokema. She said, realize that prophecy requires perseverance. You will have to hang in there. Prophecy requires patience. Learn to grow in character as you wait on the Lord for the promise of God. So very briefly, let's consider two biblical characters who refused to give up on the promise. In the second chapter of his gospel, Luke paints two very similar portraits. Two faithful Jews, one a man, the other a woman, both of them well along in years, and both of them waiting near the temple to see the Messiah. And they had been waiting a long time. I'll read from Luke chapter 2. The man was named Simeon, who was righteous and devout. And he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die 
before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And Simeon clung to that promise for many, many years. I imagine that every time a child was brought into the temple, Simeon would have, his heart would have begun racing. He would have wondered, could it be? Is this the one? But for years, it had never been the right child. And then one day, it was. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the child Jesus in, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. And, Luke says, there was also a prophet named Anna. She was very old. She was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Just like Simeon had done, Anna recognized that this child was the long-awaited Messiah, and she knew that all of her days of waiting and praying and fasting were rewarded. And on the same day, because neither one of them gave up on the promise, they both saw it come true with their own eyes. What if Simeon and Anna would have given up on that promise 10 years before it came true? What if they would have given up a week before it came true, two weeks before? What about the day before? How tragic would it be if you gave up on your prophetic promise? One year, if you knew it was going to manifest in one year, would you stay with it? Would you keep declaring it, keep believing it, keep aligning with it? What if it was the day before? How tragic would it be if you gave up on your prophecies just before they came true? Teresa Saputis tells this story about a worn-out missionary named Heidi Baker. Heidi had been on the mission field for years and was discouraged and ready to give up. She came home on a sabbatical. She did not expect to return. She went to some meetings in the meantime where someone prophesied over her that she would pray for blind eyes and people would see. Their eyes would be opened. After receiving that word, Heidi did something, which, by the way, sets her apart from many, many people who get prophetic words. She did something. She started praying for blind people. She aligned herself with that word. I've been told that I can pray for blind eyes to see. I'm going to go out and find some blind people and pray for them. So, each time she prayed, she fully expected the person to get their sight, but nothing happened. Many people would have given up after three or four tries, but not Heidi. Every time she ran into someone who was blind, she prayed for them. If she saw a blind person on their side of the street, she'd run across the street and ask the person if they would allow her to pray for them. A whole year went by like that. She had not seen a, seen a single result, not a single healing. By that point, most people would have given up. They would have written off that prophetic word, but not Heidi. She kept on believing her word. She kept on praying for blind people. And then one day, the person she prayed for was healed. Their eyes were opened. And after that, she started seeing an amazing number of supernatural miracles and signs and wonders when she prayed for the sick. Teresa heard Heidi speak at a meeting. And this is what she said to the congregation. Do you know what the difference is between me and most of you? It's not that I got prophecies and you didn't. It's that I believed mine and I latched onto them and I pressed into them until I was walking in the promises God gave me. And then she asked them, so what are you going to do with your words? What a great question. What are you going to do with your prophetic words? How can we make this response our own? Do you have prophetic promises that are, have gone unfulfilled for what seems like a long, long time? Do you believe that God is working at this very moment to bring them to pass? If you knew it would manifest tomorrow, would you press into it for one more day? If you were sure it would be fulfilled next year, would you keep fighting for it for that year? Well, whatever God's perfect timing is, and, and it will be perfect, don't give up on your promise. Keep on fighting for it. Next video, the final response. Don't obsess over it.